Hello friends, Nick of Nicktastic Art. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel. This evening's piece is going to be a large swipe. I really wanted a bright, fun, um, colorful piece that fell off into white. So the background's white, the cell activator's dark, um, and it ended up looking a little bit like a banana. So I added some embellishments after it was dried. Join me on this journey. We are working on a 24 by 36 and we're going to be doing a swipe and when I do these I do have to move a little quickly because the paint will start drying. So I've already got the white laid. We're going to do a rainbow of colors I'm super excited about. They are all color art pigments and I'll put the names in the description. As always I appreciate you guys being here. Um, and I decided that I was going to lay the colors um, so that when I swiped, they weren't, I'm going to swipe from the center point. So purple's actually going to be our center point, which is kind of interesting. But this is a very pretty purple, and it is a blend of three pigments. So we're just going to put a purple line right about there like that. And it, we'll swipe two different directions, so it will make sense when we get to that point. We're going to go on this side with the blue, and we're going to put that blue right next to him. So just putting that color art pigment right next to a, his friend. We've got that gorgeous kind of, we'll call that one that I just put down indigo because it will dry darker, and this one is kind of like a teal blue. Now my lines are getting longer, so I need to pull that back a little bit and shorten them up. And then we're going to put the green. And this is a blend of, like I said, a couple of them because my juicy pear just wasn't deep enough for what I was doing. When I mix my um, pigments up, I do obviously a little color test on the top. So now we're going to put the red on here. That candy apple red is one of my favorite, all time favorite colors from the color our pigments. Going in with this pineapple, oh no, pineapple crush is last. Um, this orange, I actually used a prism pour color in addition to the pigment because I, none of the pigments I had was were orangey enough, if that makes sense. So this actually has a prism pour in it as well. And that is the poppy color, golden poppy. That is their prism color. And then we're gonna put this pineapple crush, my one of my absolute favorites on here. Now we are going to swipe with black, and I've got that ready and prepared, and that is the Australian Floetrol with Amsterdam Oxide Black. And then I think we're going to use, we're going to use the big one, I think we're going to use the big one. And like I said, we'll do two multiple passes at this, so just going to I've got some paper towels up here prepped and ready. Just kind of grab these and get to a point where I can quickly clean off and move forward. So we're just going to grab the black. I'm going to put this on the knife and then wiggle it a little bit to get the knife covered from here. And we're going to go slowly across, pulling that yellow all the way. Okay. Now, loading up the knife again. Same thing, wiggle it around. Whoops. Get your coverage. Some people like to dip their knife in, their palette knife into it. I prefer this method, but. And then we're going to come for another right next to where it is. So we're going to go from the red and pull slowly. And 
and then we may do a smaller one. Um, let me see if I've got that. Yeah, I do have that little guy. Oh, you're a little bit dirty. That's all right, we'll make it work. And then I'm gonna come now and I'm gonna go from the other side. And I actually want to come from the top here because we're gonna angle this and we're gonna come from here and kind of spin this canvas so that it goes up. We're gonna load up the knife again. Stay, come back here. Because I've got a bracer bar underneath this piece, um, I do have to kind of support it with some items underneath there, so. And then we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna come from this side and we're gonna go slowly Okay, so I think I'm gonna switch from this big one to the smaller one now. And he is over here. So it's a uh, number two. I think I've talked about him before. He's just a short one. And over there, okay. Got enough here. So now I'm gonna take this from the red and pull out to the side. And as I pull here, I'm gonna start going up like that. I had a little oopy in the middle there, but we'll see how it works out. And the same thing from the other side. We're gonna take this side and pull. And as we pull, well, we're gonna drip right on the canvas. Yay! Okay, because that's got colors in there and cell activator, I do need to get that off. And so we will use a palette knife to scoop this up because I don't want that color to stay and then spread. Got my black covered. It does have white on the top of it now from a drip on the side, apparently. Oh, torch, torch this. Uh, da, da, da. That I just put the white on. Lots of bubbles in there. All right, and we're gonna give this a little spin. Kind of looks like a banana, a <laughs> very colorful banana, but all right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move this, this direction so that it swings down a little bit more on this side. Just set you over there. Okay. Come like that. And we're going to go again. Okay, not getting a whole lot of movement. So we might have to be a little more forceful. Getting a little bit of white starting to move. Ugh. Yeah, but it's going down to the bottom still. Come here, you. Ooh, that was a handful of paint. All right, so we are going to just tilt this a little bit, and I'm gonna go this direction with the tilt. OK, 
Okay, so we are getting some movement. I just want it to kind of go back up. Okay. So let's get these over here on this side. Because I kind of like what's happening there. Let's get this one on this side. Let's go. Because all the paint's sitting right here right now, if I were to push it up, it's going to take it up with it. Okay. Alright, so we definitely want this to be higher. I really want the yellow to come off. And then we'll work out what we're going to do with the blue and the green. Oh, did we get off? I think we did. I think the yellow's off. Okay. So, what I want to do is take that yellow all the way off now. Just a little bit more. Just need that white to go. Yeah. Are we still in frame? Oh. Nope. So I'm trying to get that little bit. I don't know if you can see there's a white, there's a pile of white right there that just needs to get off. So I'm liking what I'm seeing up there. Now I just need to kind of shift this a little bit and looking at it, I think what I'm going to do is we're going to add a little bit more color. I think we are good. Got a little bubble of paint right here, but it's not enough for me to, to worry about. Hopefully it'll level out as it dries. Yeah. I think let's take a look at how this dries because this is definitely going to be interesting. All right, here are the dried results. Now, obviously, I added two embellishment line sections, four in total, but I ended up putting a kind of opposing side approach. Um, it was intended to break up kind of the curvature of it to make it look not so um, uniform and it's in its half circleness, for lack of a better term. So we'll take a look couple, I'll look here a little bit closer. All right, so as you can see, there is a lot of stuff going on here. I love the section in the middle there. I love how it kind of works together with that white. I, I think that the lines were the right choice to kind of break up the piece. Um, I learned something interesting about the pigments and using those if you're trying to block off, um, which is they don't they don't like it. They have a tendency to peel the whole thing off when you remove it. So just got to be careful about that and be aware of it. Overall, though, I think this is a really popping pretty piece. It's it's got flavor for sure. So thank you everyone for stopping by. Find your bliss.